So it's been an amazing, amazing time here. I was going to do a different video today, a successor to the previous one, but Mother changed my plans again. <laughs> she has this way of dropping a message into your mind, and it's like you totally get it, but you don't get it. How can I explain? It's it's not an intellectual message. It's an emotional message. So last night I was lucid dreaming <laughs> and we were driving down to Florida, me and the, well, the goddess. I was gonna call her Ma, but in this dream she was my what can I say, my wife, my girlfriend, <laughs> my companion. And there wasn't any mood of eroticism between us, yet we were on a totally equal level and really, really comfortable with each other. And we were driving in some like futuristic autonomous vehicle. <laughs> It just had a key that was a, a, just a plain sheet of plastic, you know, like the back of an ATM card, like a magnetic stripe. So you don't have to turn it or anything. You just insert it and pull it out, and the car opens up. And the funny thing about dreams is <laughs> even the most amazing, weird, far-out stuff can happen, and you just accept it like it's normal, right? Like I open the car door and I go in one side of the door and she goes in the other side of the same door. Now, looking back at this, I'm like, what? But at the time in the dream, it was just like, okay, that's the, that's the way it is, all right. So we're trying to go to Florida and we went Somehow the car got mixed up. <laughs> we wound up on a road, like a dirt road, that goes down into a flooded area. And it was like, oops, well, we can't go this way, right? But somehow or other, we made it through it. Uh, it was so bizarre how we went through there. I don't even want to try to describe it. <laughs> But it was, it was weird. It was like a scissor cutting through the mud. See, I told you, it's impossible to explain. It's just dream stuff. So then we finally get to this town, which I guess was in Florida. <laughs> and we're walking somewhere. And all of a sudden, we walk into this mall, shopping mall. And, you know, it's your typical mall, all fake, rosewood paneling and, you know, Muzak, bland, boring Muzak in the background and all these shops. But just like the last time I had a dream about her in a mall, all the stores were closed. And it was like closing time. So we took this thing that looked like an elevator, but it went sideways. <laughs> I'm telling you, dreams. But in the dream, it was just normal. And somehow or other, instead of going out the exit, we wound up going into the office. And the office had all this weird stuff, <laughs> including a couple of shortwave radios, which I don't know if that kind of gear belongs in a mall office, but there it was. And so we're just looking for the exit and finally, we find out, we figure out how to get out of there. And that was it. And I woke up. So you Freudian analysts out there, <laughs> what you can read into this dream, I don't know. But the, the symbol of the mall with the empty shops 
like closing time at the mall. I think this indicates that like desires and none of the desires that can be fulfilled on this level, you know, the earth level of the universe are attractive to me. They're closed. They're not available. They're like not open. So, yeah, to me, it's like that. You know, if I try to meet someone uh, for, for any purpose, for dating or for spiritual discussion or whatever, it's always disappointing. It's never really, you know, what I expect or what I need it to be. It's always something to do with their program, which is so limited and so basic and just so, you know, boring. <laughs> I give up on it. I just walk away from it, you know, because it doesn't. First of all, people don't recognize who I am. Confirmed. They don't see with spiritual vision. You know, it's like when I first approached my Adi Guru, he immediately saw exactly who I was and what I needed. And he arranged so that I could have it. So, you know, even though I look back and say, well, his philosophy is a little weird and, you know, his management style was, you know, could be abusive sometimes. And, you know, really he wound up creating a cult. But to me, he was like the best father ever, you know, and we had very little contact. He just saw immediately who I was and what I needed. And the same with Osho. Osho, whenever I went to his place, I never had to do anything. I could just meditate and soak up the teachings. And that was great, you know, and everybody's running around working like dogs, having sexual affairs and so, and I never got involved in any of it. And then when I went to Bhikkhu Nyanananda in Sri Lanka, he looked at me, we sat down together in silence for some time. And then he said three words. Nibbana is non-conceptual. Boom. It was just what I needed to hear. And like so many mental blocks just went down like dominoes, one after the other. And I was transported into samadhi. And so we sat there for a few more minutes. And then we had like a normal conversation. <laughs> as if nothing had just happened. But, but I was irrevocably changed. And he recognized my enlightenment experience from 1984 as being first path. And just that alone completely, uh, how can I say, revived that experience for me and put me right back in that space where I was then. And then very soon afterwards, within the next two or three years, I got the next three, second, third, and fourth path. So you see, a real teacher takes one look at you and knows. Why? He can feel your energy. He knows your mind. Just like Buddha said, in some suttas. How did you know this about such and such a person? And Buddha said, I encompassed his mind with my mind. Which means, first of all, that his mind is bigger than the other person's mind. He can easily encompass it. And second of all, that he has such compassion. He didn't judge the person. And oftentimes he didn't even tell them what to do. But he gave them some instruction that opened up something that wasn't available to that person before. So this is the real teacher. This is the real guru. 
You know, not like you pay a bunch of money and then you go to a weekend seminar and you have to sit way far away out in the bleachers because there's a huge crowd and you're watching this guy perform with a few selected disciples and, you know, maybe there's planted people in the crowd feeding his agenda. Uh, it's a business. He doesn't see you. He doesn't know you. He has a pre-planned agenda, a strategy that he uses with all everybody who comes to him. It doesn't really matter who you are. Huh? You know, like people I met outside of uh, Nyanananda in the Buddhist monasteries, they were blind. They couldn't see who I was. All they could see is, oh, he's a new monk. He's a baby monk. So put him on the baby monk formula. It was so degrading, disrespectful, waste of my time. I walked on all those guys. I didn't sit around and let them treat me like an imbecile. I have more self-respect than that. I know who I am. <laughs> Just like we were talking the other day about Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the title for a self-realized soul. Doesn't matter. They might be an incarnation or they might not. They might just be an ordinary person. But if they have self-realization, they deserve the title Bhagavan. See, so I think this is what Ma is telling me. I think this is what the goddess is showing me, the message that she's giving in my dream. That you're, you're on an equal level with me. You know all the truths. The king of knowledge is yours. It's you. You are the king of knowledge. You are Bhagavan. She's telling me, I treat you like an equal. I'm your buddy, pal, companion. We have been for years, decades even, as far as I can remember. Confirmed again. So this is her message to me, and this is my message to you, that don't underestimate me. You know, I don't have the Hollywood good looks. You know, I don't have the passionate nature of a, a being with strong appetites in this world. In fact, I'm more like, you know, f just forget about it, because none of it is satisfying. None of it is satisfying, and no one in this world is satisfying because they don't really get who I am. Would you want to have an intimate relationship with someone who stubbornly refuses to recognize who you are, even though you tell them in many, many ways over and over and over again? I wouldn't. I wouldn't waste my time. I'm happier being all by myself me and my lion <laughs> and the goddess, you know, we're, we're a, a team. And it's like we all see each other as enlightened beings. And that's the way it should be. There should be vision. There should be spiritual recognition. There should be a relationship that's based on who I really am and who you really are. And of course, we've been over this a bunch of times that everyone is really Brahman. Uh, doesn't matter whether you're handsome or ugly, young or old, male or female, or what species or what planet you're from. If you have that knowledge, if you have that jnan, that realized knowledge, then you are due all the respect of Bhagavan. Because you have realized the supreme ultimate truth. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.